Um, there's one person making music that's, why would you three clap their hands? What do you clap your hands for in life? You clap your hands, what makes you clap your hands? Something good happens? Yeah, you clap when you're happy? You usually don't clap when you're sad. No. So one of the things we can do is remember that all of nature is making a sound of joy. But you have to use your imagination. You guys use your imagination sometimes. Can you picture? Everybody look out and pick a tree. You see one? Okay, I spy a green branches. <laughs> what would it be like if those branches were joyful? Can you picture them clapping in your imagination? Maybe you can picture yourself clapping too. So I have a prayer for us today. Remember that you are part of creation. And all of us are made to say joyful, joyful noises. And we can do a tree pose to remember we're part of nature. Has anybody done a tree pose before? Okay, you want to show us how? Put your sunglasses on? Yes, exactly. Okay, for our body prayer, we're praising God with our bodies today. We're going to pretend to be a tree, just like our friend here. Let's do it. Elijah, and they said, 
Did you know that God's going to take your mask away from you today? And he said, yes, I know. I don't want to talk about it. And then Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. God has sent me on an errand in Jordan. And Elisha said again, not on your life. I'm not letting you out of my sight. And so the two of them went on their way together. Meanwhile, 50 men from the Guild of Prophets gathered some distance away while the two of them stood on the bank of the Jordan River. And Elijah took his cloak and rolled it up and hit the water with it. And the river divided and the two men walked down through on dry land. And when they reached the other side, Elijah said to Elisha, What can I do for you before I'm taken away from you? Ask me anything. And Elisha said, your life repeated in my life. I want to be a holy man just like you. Give me a double share of your spirit. That's a hard thing, said Elijah. But if you're watching when I'm taken from you, you'll get what you asked for. But only if you're watching. So it happened. They were walking along and talking, and suddenly a chariot and horses of fire came between them, and Elijah went up in a whirlwind to heaven. And Elisha saw it all, and he shouted, My father, my father, you are the chariots and the cavalry of Israel. And when he could no longer see Elijah, he grabbed his own robe and ripped it into pieces. He picked up Elijah's cloak that had fallen from him and returned to the shore of the Jordan River and stood there and hit the river with it and said, Now where's the God of Elijah? Where is he? And when he struck the water, the river divided and Elisha walked down through. The guild of prophets from Jericho saw this whole thing from where they were standing and they said, The spirit of Elijah lives in Elisha and they welcomed and honored him. First of all, I was prepared to, to uh, give you a disclaimer that uh, I was going to preach this sermon a long time ago, and it wasn't before a whirlwind knocked eight trees off my property a couple of weeks ago. And there was a threat of one today. Uh, so it's a fitting, right? We all know. We kind of watch the weather and see what happens, right? Yeah. But there are whirlwinds, and sometimes we get caught up in social, well, it's literal, caught up in a whirlwind. Some of us feel that way today. Some of us feel that way about the state of our nation. Some of us feel that way about the state of the world, what's going on in the Ukraine. Some of us that see people living on the streets, we feel that way every day. Because it's a whirlwind. We're always in the middle of a whirlwind, and the question is, what are we going to do with it? So this is how much I like the stories of life. While my second son was going to be born, my mom kept asking me, what are you going to name him? You know he's going to be a boy. And so I would say, Jehoshaphat, <laughs> Aminadab, and on and on, right? So she stopped asking me, which it worked, right? <laughs> So when my son was born, we were in St. Louis, and she was about an hour and a half away because she was watching our younger son, Luke. And uh, the first thing she said is, what's your name? And I said, Elijah. And she says, no, what is your really name? <laughs> I said, Elijah. And uh, she really didn't believe it at first. But that's how much I like the name Elijah because he is the prophet of the Old Testament. He is the one that upholds justice and righteousness in the nation. There's all sorts of stories about Elijah. Stories about him going up in a whirlwind. Stories about when he was fighting against uh, Ahab and Jezebel. And there was a man whose field had been taken away from him. 
and Elijah defended him. Now, someone has been asking me recently about our vows of membership. Can anybody recite the vows of membership in our church? I do. I do. <laughs> Our vows of membership are pretty simple. To resist oppression and evil and to show love and justice and to witness to the works and the words of Jesus Christ as best as you are able. There's a period at the end of that sentence. At a recent conference that I was at, they said you ought to judge the things that you do in the church by asking the question, why is what we are doing important to God? Elijah asked that question. Elijah picked up the mantle. And so Elisha was so uh, caught up in the ministry of Elijah, he couldn't imagine doing anything else in his life. And this could very well be a description of the life of the prophet Elijah. And Elijah is an example of someone who was caught up in a world where he was resisting oppression and evil and trying to show love and justice. 700 years later, there was a man named John the Baptist, and he liked Elijah so well that he went out and got a costume to look just like Elijah, and he went down to the St. George River, just like Elijah. And he went to the banks, and there was a man named Jesus who came to the bank to be baptized because he heard about this story, and he was a cousin. And the rest of that is history. I think it was Yoda that said, always two there are. There's always a person who is inspired and the person that inspired them. When you're at a Jewish Seder, they always leave one seat open because they're hoping that Elijah will come back and put things right. Jesus is on the cross and he says, M-I-L-I, Lama Sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And everybody around there thought he was calling for Elijah to come take him down because the uh, thought about Elijah was he came back and he helped people who were in need. The legend about Elijah is that he comes back and helps vulnerable people. What do you imagine those two guys did when they walked around? So this morning what I want to, to encourage you to do is just one simple thing. This morning I want you to pick up the mantle. Because there's someone in your life that's been a very good example of the kind of person who glorified God and who shared their gifts with the world. Pick up that man. It might be someone you know personally. It might be someone that you admire from history. But if it is, you better study that person and follow them down, track them down. Don't let anybody shake you from the trail. And pick up that same spirit of love and justice that's in that person. And you claim your personal power over the problems of the world. Paul said, put on Christ. Same thing. At adult Bible study one time, we were talking about how uh, the clothes you wear makes you feel differently. Think about that. The clothes you wear makes you think differently. One time, we were talking about our shoes. I want you to look down at your shoes. How many stories are in those shoes? I want you to think about where you walk. Was it Gilgal? Was it Jericho? Who did you walk with in those shoes? Where did you buy those shoes? How many people are connected to you because of those shoes? So we all feel different when we wear new clothing different outfit, because our clothes define us. You can think about a pastor. Right? Today I might look different to you. I usually have a rope and stoles on, right? I look different. Feels a little different. When you go in the military, you get a uniform. When you work at Wendy's, you put on a uniform. When you work at Walmart, you put on a uniform. And you have certain expectations that are different when you put that clothing on. So someone in our group 
after we ask the question, where is the one place that you feel most engaged when you change into a different pair of clothes and you're involved in a group? What do you think they said? Anybody want to say? Is there some place you put on different clothes and you go into a group? Several people in the group said, Ohio State University football. <laughs> see the scarlet and gray right now in our mind. Mm -hmm. We can see the people with their stocking hats and their colors. Mm -hmm. It brings you together. You know why you're putting that on and you're a different person when you're wearing it. You know, I'm so glad that we hold parties for people uh, in the life of our church just to hold a party for them. Now, that's all we do, right? Because we know they're the people that are really making a difference out in the world. Some of you might uh, have remembered Glenn, Glenn Royer. He was 90 years old. He had a 90th birthday party. I'm so glad he had that party for him there. It was a surprise party, and he actually did surprise him. It was even better. Ed Sure, how many of you remember Ed Sure? He did his 90th birthday party down there. Mary Soliday, I think we did Mary Soliday's 95th birthday down there. How many of you remember when Lynn and Art Arve renewed their vows after 60 years of marriage down there? and brought everybody along and invited them to be there. They were happy to shower you with affirmation, and it wasn't just for them. It was for us. And any time we gather together as people of faith, it's not for you. It's for us. It's for us to inspire other people. And to remember we're walking down that road and we don't know when one of us is going to get called up in the world then. Or when we're going to get inspired or where we're going to go, but we're going to go with them. What would a double portion of Glenn Royer's faith be like today? Oh my, I don't know. What would a full measure of Lynn Arve's compassion be like today? What would a full measure of Mary Saladay's grace be like today? Always glad when we do those things. It's not just for them, it's for all of us. We know that their spirit never left us. It wasn't because of their human interest. It wasn't because of what they did in the world. They just couldn't let go of this vision that the world can be better. So teachers and healers, shepherds and counselors, that's what you are. That's what the Bible says. And in a very real way, I want you to know that we don't depend on the government to save the world. Any branch of Because people of faith are the defense system of the world, and they always have been. Martin Luther King and others, many others we can name here. And the world of justice and peace, the world that we want to live in, will never be found in a missile silo. It'll never be found with drone warfare. It doesn't matter how much money you throw in that budget. They won't be found in trade wars or tariffs or Congress or even the Supreme Court. It's going to happen in the lives of people like you who have compassion and justice. People of goodwill who are just hanging on to this vision and knowing we've got this guy, we're following along and we're waiting for him to drop that mantle. So, all of you know that uh, Ella is uh, fantastically involved with patient safety in hospitals. And there are a whole lot of meetings that Ella has with a lot of people from government agencies who are working on keeping people safe and putting resources toward that. And so a lot of times she says, well, today I'm going to have a conference with so-and-so. And I always say to her, well, I'll pray for them, and don't be too hard on them. <laughs> Isn't that true? <laughs> and 
And so on Christmas, I got her a t-shirt. And on it, it said, they whispered to her, you can't withstand the storm. And she whispered back, I am the storm. <laughs> and I hope all of you can say, you are the storm. You are the whirlwind. And we're walking down that road. And we will walk other people down that road as long as we have life and breath. And I want you to take them and I want you to show them, whether it's in breakfast or North Street Mission or uh, interns or uh, agencies. Anybody who walks through our doors, I'm taking them with me. Is that true, George? I want them to stand by me. And you all know that's my offer. Someday, if you don't know what happens there, you come stand by me. And we'll walk through that world now. And we'll take it. And we'll show it. A man from Cleveland the other day called me for advice. They were part of a, a, a North Street Mission group that came here three, four years ago. And they started up a hot meal program right there in their church in Cleveland. And they did it based on what we do. And they were asking me questions, technical questions, about what do you do with this, what do you do with that. And so we're still walking with people who we met three years ago down the road, and they, they're walking with us, and we don't even know it. So today, I want us to honor and to revere the people who made our world a better place in the first place, who made our church a better place. Think about all those people. And like a very human Elijah, a very human yet ambitious Elisha, whatever progress they made in their day, God bless them. God bless Ed Sure. God bless Glenn Royer. But now we got to take up that hard thing, that hard thing of going forward, even when we don't see any signs of hope. Everybody along the way was trying to get Elisha to stop hoping and stop going along the way to see Elijah, see his mission through and to pick it up. So I say this a lot, but I really do mean it. We're trying to do something very difficult. And we're trying to do something that's very different from anything else that anyone in the world is going to do. And what Jesus did was he walked around and he told the disciples to follow him. Elijah tried to shake Elisha off, but he persevered. Walk around. Invite people to come just as they are. And follow us around. You are enough. Just because you wear shoes. Just because you can put on that spirit of love. Come just as you are and pick up the man. We need to create spaces where people can be welcomed and wanted and to find one another with these common values. So as we're living out these questions, we go back to the denomination. Why is what we are doing important to God? So come just as you are. You are welcome, you are worthy to walk with Jesus. And don't you ever forget that you are the storm. Amen. We uh, have a benediction in our bulletin, and uh, this is the uh, close of our service, so we want to remind you, you're welcome to stay with us and uh, have a picnic lunch with us and get to know one another better. And uh, we thank you for coming. We're glad the uh, rain held off and the world. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. join me. One o'clock, is that All right, we'll eat fast. <laughs> so join with me responsibly in the closing benediction. May the silence of the hills. Peace of the field. The music of the birds. The fire of the sun. The strength of the trees. And the spirit of our friendship. Be ever in your heart.